love. When love beckons you, follow him, though his ways are hard and steep. For even as love crowns you, so shall he crucify you. Even as he is for your growth, so he is for your pruning. All these things shall love do unto you, that you may know the secrets of your heart, and in that knowledge become a fragment of life's heart. Love gives not, but itself, and takes not, but from itself. Love possesses not, nor would it be possessed, for love is sufficient unto love. And think not you can direct the course of love. For love, if it finds you worthy, directs your course. Children, your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts. For they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls. For their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, even in your dreams. Thank you.
teaching. No man can reveal to you aught but that which already lies half asleep in the dawning of knowledge. The teacher who walks in the shadow of the temple among his followers gives not of his wisdom, but rather of his faith and his lovingness. If he is indeed wise, he does not bid you enter the house of his wisdom, but rather leads you to the threshold of your own mind. And even as each one of you stands alone in God's knowledge, so must each one of you stand alone in his knowledge of God and in his understanding of the earth. Crime and punishment. It is when your spirit goes wandering on the wind that you, alone and unguarded, commit a wrong unto others and therefore yourself. And for that wrong committed, you must knock and wait a while unheeded at the gate of the blessed. Oftentimes I have heard you speak of one who commits a wrong as though he were not one of you, but a stranger unto you and an intruder upon your world. But I say that even as the holy and the righteous cannot rise beyond the highest that is in each one of you, so the wicked and the weak cannot fall lower than the lowest which is in you also. And if any of you would punish in the name of righteousness and lay the ax unto the evil tree, let him see to its roots.
and verily he will find the roots of the good, the bad, the fruitful, and the fruitless, all entwined together in the silent heart of the earth. are the rudder and the sails of your seafaring soul. If either your sails or rudder be broken, you can but toss and drift, or be held at a standstill in the mid seas. For reason, ruling alone is a force confining. Passion, unattended, is a flame that burns to its own destruction. Among the hills when you sit in the cool shade of the white poplars, sharing the peace and serenity of distant fields and meadows, then let your heart say in silence, God rest in reason. And when the storm comes and the mighty wind shakes the forest and thunder and lightning shake the sky, then let your heart say in awe. And since you are a breath in God's spirit and a leaf in God's forest, you too should rest in reason and move in passion. Your pain is the breaking of the shell that encloses your understanding. Even as the stone of the fruit must break, that its heart may stand in the sun, so must you know pain. Could you keep your heart in wonder at the daily miracles of life? Your pain would not seem less wondrous than your joy. And you would accept the seasons of your heart, even as you have always accepted the seasons that pass over the field. would 
watch with serenity through the winters of your grief. Beauty. Where shall you seek beauty, and how shall you find her, unless she herself be your way and your God? How shall you speak of her, except she be the weaver of her speech? At night, the watchmen of the city say, Beauty shall rise with the dawn from the east. And at noontide, the toilers and the wayfarers say, we have seen her leaning over the earth from the windows of sunset. In winter, say the snowbound, she shall come with the spring leaping over the hills And in the summer heat, the reapers say, we have seen her dancing with the autumn leaves, and we saw a drift of snow in her hair. All these things have you said of beauty, yet in truth you spoke not of her, but of needs unsatisfied. And beauty is not a need, but an ecstasy. It is not the image you would see or the song you would hear, but rather an image you see though you close your eyes, and a song you hear though you shut your ears. Beauty is eternity, gazing at herself in the mirror. But you are eternity, and you are the mirror.